Actors and actresses playing roles that require them to adopt a fanciful accent have been using that opportunity as an excuse to make cartoon character noises for years, because we all like silly voices. We have since we were children. Sometimes a role doesn't even require a funny voice, the actor will just do one anyway because terrible exposition becomes delightful when delivered in the Bane voice. And in fairness, should we really expect an actor to nail down the subtle intricacies of a regional dialect most members of the audience are never going to encounter in real life? After all, the realism of the accent has nothing to do with how much you enjoy it. The actor's job is not to get it right, their job is to get a thing that we think sounds right, or that's just entertaining. John Malkovich's character in Rounders talks like an Eisenhower press secretary's idea of a Russian pirate gangster. Don't you worry, son. It will all be over soon. It's a thoroughly inauthentic accent in every possible way. But everyone loved that character, so we accepted it. Not only an amateur film historian, but I'm positive that at no point during the production of that movie did anyone stop to say, you think you might be laying it on a little thick, Academy Award winner John Malkovich? Because you sound like a shape-shifting alien failing to bluff its way through the criminal underworld. You're right. I don't have spades. This should be one of the easiest things in the world to research, right? I mean, provided you're trying to do an accent that actually exists and not some goofball voice you invented to make a C-list superhero villain more interesting. You just kind of listen to the way that people talk in whatever part of the world your character is supposed to be from and then just just do that thing. You know, get a dialect coach to help you. That's what Leonardo DiCaprio did when he started filming Blood Diamond. He wanted to make absolutely sure that his South African accent was 100% authentic, and it was. And every single one of us made fun of it, because even though we have no idea what a South African accent is supposed to sound like, we all decided that it definitely wasn't supposed to sound like that. Are you Chris? You get for pay me first for them. And if you can't do the accent, just, just don't do it, just, just give up. Kevin Costner plays one of the most famous English folk heroes of all time in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and he doesn't even f***ing bother. The sheriff calls us outlaws, but I say we are free. They actually filmed part of that movie with Costner doing his absolute best to sound like a British person, and whatever was coming out of his head sounded so ghoulish that the director told him to knock it off, and they reshot everything they had already filmed with normal Costner voice. Christian Slater is doing a British voice in that movie. You're still trying to be Lord of the Manor. So that means an actual human being said the words, you know what, Kevin, maybe just, maybe just drop the accent. Christian, you're killing it, man. Keep it up. Jude Law can't do an American voice to save his life, and yet he keeps stepping up to the plate and swinging that shitty accent bat like Casey goddamn Jones. I got stood up to and I'm pissed off. Give me twenty dollars. Everyone in America should be able to do a convincing Southern accent. It's a voice we hear all the time from local news anchors, radio personalities, commercials for regional Toyota dealerships, and people we actually know and interact with. And yet for some reason, we have decided the only two types of Southerners who exist in movies and TV shows are plantation owners. I've always loathed the necessity of sleep. And Foghorn Leghorn. I'll send you out with a shotgun a lot more. Now we know this isn't authentic. Everyone loved Nick Cage's voice in Con Air because it was completely f***ing bonkers, but not because it bore any resemblance to how a real human being speaks. Put the bunny back in the box. Nobody stopped him from doing that totally absurd accent. And while the world is undeniably a better place for it, it's insane to think that we've all just gradually decided that this is what people from the South sound like. In Gaffney, we had our own brand of diplomacy. Shake with your right hand, but hold a rock in your left. Kevin Spacey has been nominated for both a Golden Globe and an Emmy. Every single year, House of Cards has been on. And according to some linguists interviewed by Vox, his accent on that show is a jumbled mix of different regions and different freaking time periods. Speaking of critically acclaimed television, Game of Thrones displays a huge amount of attention to detail in the costumes and locations and set design, but the accents on that show are a goddamn free-for-all. The Starks are supposed to be the wards of the North, yet only Ned, John, and Rob sound like they've lived there for longer than a year. None of the Lannisters sound like they grew up anywhere near each other. Cersei has the voice of a spoiled governess, which seems appropriate. It's no mercy letting a child linger in such pain. But then somehow her brothers Jaime and Tyrion sound like a Bond villain. At times she might be wonder whose side you're on and a dungeon master. Only the gods know for certain. And where the f is Littlefinger supposed to be from? You're right. He wasn't involved in Joffrey's death. He sounds like an Irishman trying to scare the Irish out of his voice. Now I understand if they thought an Irish brogue would be distracting, but whatever cloud of madness they've got tumbling out of his mouth instead is way more distracting. Stop being a bystander, do you hear me? Stop running. And hey, remember when every Oscar nominated movie was about people from Boston? Shoot a cop, Einstein. Watch what happens. He stabbed a foreign exchange student in the chest. Wicked smart. At some point in our rampant enthusiasm for grown humans talking to each other like Jim Henson characters, we began to confuse insane, dipshit voices with good performances. Al Pacino was snubbed by the Academy for years, till he finally won an Oscar for playing an ex-army soldier from New York who is inexplicably Cajun. It's Ranger Choco, teaching those second lieutenants. 
He went on to do that same psychotic voice for five or six more movies, including Devil's Advocate, in which he starred alongside Keanu Reeves, the only person on the planet who does a less convincing southern accent than Nicolas Cage. Oh, you got it now. Keanu is so bad at doing accents that even his actual voice sounds fake. I know where the bastard sleeps. I'm not a cop right now. See? We're just two cool guys. And after Jeff Bridges finally won his Best Actor Oscar for Crazy Heart, I just sent what might be my best song ever to Tommy. He immediately launched to a string of roles as weird human cartoons with completely over-the-top accents. Let's learn you a few things about Old West fighting. I mean to kill you in one minute, Ned. So he was picking movies solely based on how much of a daffy, nonsense voice it would allow him to do. You can't even understand what he's saying in True Grit, and that movie was nominated for 10 Oscars. Don't believe in fairy tales or sermons or stories about money, baby sister, but thanks for the cigarette. Also, how come nobody pointed out that Josh Brolin is straight up doing a Buffalo Bill impression in that movie? All I need is your silence. If you remember, Buffalo Bill was a serial killer played by Ted Levine in The Silence of the Lambs, another Academy Award winning film featuring a ludicrous buffet of wacky voices. Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Why did Ted Levine decide to do that weird, non-existent accent in the first place? He's playing an intense serial murder in one of the most critically acclaimed thrillers ever made, and he's doing a garbage can Muppet voice that makes his character hilarious. Did he know he was being hilarious? Was that intentional? Or did nobody notice because they were all too busy trying to figure out what the hell Anthony Hopkins was doing? Quid pro quo. I tell you things, you tell me things. Not about this case, though. Hannibal Lecter's supposed to be Eastern European or, or something. So where the hell did that accent come from? We've gotten to the point where we expect actors to invent some bullshit voice in order to make their characters more interesting. I read that you base your character's voice on Pete Eastwood. Yeah, watching Clint Eastwood, yeah, yeah do you see. Do you do a lot of impersonation? Make my day. How did you come up with how you wanted the Mandarin to sound? Um, a lot of the clues came from the script itself. I'm pretty sure the only reason anyone is going to remember The Dark Knight Rises 10 years from now is because of that ridiculous Bane voice. Slash him, then I will kill you. Yeah, I know it's been some time, and we've all had our laughs about it, but it really cannot be overstated just how f***ing insane it is that Tom Hardy started talking like that in a $200 million movie and nobody stopped him. Even crazier, that was actually his second attempt. They had to re-record all of his dialogue because the first voice he tried out was so massively insane that nobody could figure out what the hell he was saying. And still, nobody took him aside and said, Hey Tom, maybe just try saying this like an adult would say it and not like a He-Man villain. Who gave him that idea? If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. Ah! Little finger, you cunning chess master. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Um, if you like it, click like, head down to the comments, and maybe uh, suggest some other crazy voices that you've heard in movies that I didn't mention in this video, because there's, there's a whole lot of them. <laughs>